one of the goals of the Fabulous Echoes was to travel and perform all over the world. In order to make a start, they had to go somewhere. One day, the Prime Minister of Bangkok's wife came into town and we took her down to the Paramount and she was so impressed that the boys were booked at the Naturist nightclub and they were performing in Bangkok two days later. The first recording that the Fabulous Echoes did was a song called A Little Bit of Soap. Our lead singer is from Ceylon and he cannot pronounce W instead of what he keeps saying bass. A little bit of soap, put a bass away. <laughs> we have recorded that that particular line for at least about what 30, 30 times. Oh my God! But finally, Francis Kirk said, "I just forget it. You just leave it like that." You know what? It become a hit. A little bit of soap. It was a huge success. 32 weeks number one, and it eclipsed even the Beatles' I Wanna Hold Your Hand. The success of A Little Bit of Soap made them a big attraction. And now we were bringing in more and more acts, so they performed with Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong, Patti Page, Sammy Davis Jr., and Pat Boone. And we got our first break, and we had a choice to go either to Italy or to go to Las Vegas. And our engagement in Las Vegas was four weeks. That was it. And Francis said, hey guys, if we become success, we'll be in Las Vegas for a long time. If we flop, go right back to Hong Kong. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up. Ed Sullivan sees the fabulous echoes in Las Vegas. On the road again, everybody clap your hands, you? I just can't wait to get on the road again. In 1964, the fabulous echoes had a number one record in Hong Kong. And after making an impression on an American promoter, the boys were on their way to Las Vegas, Nevada. At that time, Las Vegas was known as the entertainment capital of the world. Leading the way of legendary performers was the Rat Pack. Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. The fabulous Echoes, Tony, Danny, Bert, Stan, Terry, and Cliff, and their manager, Francis Kirk, felt this was their chance of a lifetime. They had arrived to perform a four-week gig at the Thunderbird Lounge. Getting to Las Vegas was really exciting. I mean, we had seen neon lights before, but driving up and down the street and seeing all those big name stars, all those marquees, with everybody you dreamed about seeing or, or hearing, right there was truly, truly exciting. Uh, the glitter, you know, the, you know the, th the thing that we dream about being in Las Vegas is finally happening. One of the things we had to overcome in Las Vegas was the youth of Danny Louis Bar, Tony's brother. Danny was uh, 18 years old, and you can't go get into a casino unless you're 21. So Danny would put on dark glasses, and he would be my escort. He would, I would hang on his arm, and we would go in like real lovey-dovey <laughs> and sneak past the security guards. Mr. Ed Sullivan came in to see the show. Um, at the time, we don't even know who the heck Mr. Sullivan, you know. You see, we never, we never heard of Ed Sullivan. The Ed Sullivan show does not go to Hong Kong, so we don't know who Ed Sullivan is. Apparently, everybody in Las Vegas, the cab driver, the guy that opened up the door, and the, the doorman, the bellman, they all said, hey, you got, you, Ed, you got to go see this new, the kids from Hong Kong. They're performing at the Thunderbird Lounge. 